Okay, hello everybody. This is Curtis with Campfire Tales, Cryptids of America. And I have a guest on the phone with me, Sigmund. Her name is Annie. And I'll let Annie describe, or actually tell more about her and uh, the experiences that she's had. Uh, some of them have been, uh, I think she says she grew up in a haunted house, went to a haunted college, and, and you know, pretty used to uh, spirits in her life. Um, Annie, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Hey, I'm, I'm really thrilled that you called. Um, what story do you have for us today? I have a story about a weird experience after I saw some skinwalker footage. Okay. Um, it's just a strange experience, and I really don't think it's in my blog, so it's an interesting story. Okay. Um, what uh, What is your blog information? I'm sure some My blog is... is go ahead. My blog is Ghosts That Know Me, and it's at ghoststhatknowme.blogspot.com. Okay. Uh, do you have a YouTube or anything that you want to mention? I'm going to be starting a YouTube soon in the future, um, but right now I'm just on Twitter. Um, I'm usually on Twitter every night in the middle of the night between, like, midnight and 3 or 4 a.m., and it's at at ghost, um, G-O-H-O-S-T-S underscore no, K-N-O-W, um, underscore me, I'm me. Okay. So. And, you can find me there. And I've noticed that a lot of your tweets go out at, at very late at night, and um, I, I go to bed very early at night, so that's the reason I don't reply to a lot of them. But I do read them, and uh, I, you're getting some good information yeah, we, on something from right now and listen to your friends, okay? <laughs> yeah, we kind of joke around on there in the middle of the night. I think a lot of us have insomnia, so yeah. we try to joke around and keep each other company. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead. So I was, I I had never really been into the supernatural or the paranormal, and my ex husband got me started watching Ghost Adventures, and this was like, um, probably. I mean, I had had things happen throughout my life, but I chalked them up to my imagination. I made a lot of excuses, and I I. Even though I couldn't explain things, I was very skeptical of the paranormal. My husband got me watching Ghost Adventures, and I, I was binge-watching it. And um, so then I kind of got stuck and started watching the show all the time. And when they went to Skinwalker Canyon, I watched the episode. And while they were inside the canyon, I saw something um, above them that they didn't see and they didn't point out in the footage. And so, you know, I, I tell my husband, and um, he said, show me, show me. So I, I rewound, rewound it and showed him. And after a few times when I slowed it down, he saw it too. And um, it was kind of spooky, especially because they didn't point it out on the, on the camera. And it wasn't anywhere where, near the, where they were standing. It was, like, above their head. So there was no real, real explanation. It couldn't be a shadow or something. So we went about our day, went about our business, and I, as I was taking the dogs outside, and I kept seeing, like, shadow figures, like, out of the corner of my eye. But, you know, I'm just so, even though things happen, I'm just so skeptical. I brush it off. And so later that night, we went to the movies. We, we go, we used to go real, real late at night to the movie theater. And so we were coming home, and I, I saw like a human figure, very bony, no shirt on, like run across, like dart around the side on the left side of the, the car um, in, in the tree bush area. And I said to my husband, did you see that? And he said, you know, no, no, I didn't. What did you see? And I kind of was like, it, it kind of reminded me of Skinwalker. And I, but I, you know, that just seems so odd. So, I got back to the house that night, and um, he went to bed, and usually I stayed up a lot later and did writing and stuff, and I also had really bad insomnia, and I tried to go to sleep finally, and I was restless, tossing and turning. I got up, went out into the living room. Now, 
at this time, we had had a lot of things happening in the living room. Um, my friends had passed away, and suddenly, like, things took off in, in our apartment. Um, we found out later that somebody had started a church in our apartment, um, out of our apartment, before us, before we moved in. So things had happened in the living room. I never slept out there because I just, I couldn't. I was very restless in that room. But that night, I, I was having such trouble sleeping. I went out, and I laid on the couch, and... Um, I started to drift off to sleep, and I saw and see it. Was I half asleep? Was I awake? I don't know. I saw a white mist come over my body, and it was, like, parallel, like, floating above me. And I, I thought it was, you know, my friends had just passed away. I had really bad grief, so I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I can see you, you know, I'm thinking in my mind. And um, it, it moved around, and I, oh, I can see you, I can see you. And then um, I felt something poke me. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I felt that. I felt that. And then it happened again and again. And I, I was just so shocked that I could feel something poking me when it almost didn't seem like something could possibly be there. So I, um, I, I kept saying, I can feel that. I can feel that. All of a sudden, it started jabbing me harder and harder and harder and harder. And I, I started saying, you're hurting me, you're hurting me. And it kept happening. It was, it was really starting to hurt like somebody was stabbing me in my side. And I realized that this was something bad. And, you know, I'm thinking earlier in the night, you know, when I'm seeing these things. And I took, I took my, I, I was started saying, praying. I started praying. I started saying the Lord's Prayer. I didn't, I didn't know what else to do. And I, you know, felt like something was, like, pressing down on me. So I kind of took my, all my, my energy, like, all my might and, like, pressed hard. And I pressed real hard, and suddenly whatever it was, like, backed off me and disappeared. And, um... I'll tell you, I never slept in that room again. <laughs> so it yeah. was just unexplainable. So it, it, growing up, you never had any real experiences or anything until you started watching uh, ghosts? No, I mean, I had no, I had experiences. They're all in my blog with more detail, but okay. I um, had some like experiences as a kid. I, I lived in a very secluded area. But I always felt like people were watching me. And I just chalked it up to, like, oh, God is watching me or, or you know, something. Because I grew up, you know, really in a religious kind of family. Yeah. So I I didn't have any other explanation at, at six or seven years old. And so then, um, you know, I, I had an experience when I was in high school. Um, we had gone to a Wiccan store that day. And some things happened. And then, um, that's an interesting story. Okay. It's in the, in the blog. And cause, because that, at that time I, I still was like not really believing that in, um, some events happened that day because we were reading some things out of a book and right. I didn't know what I was messing with. And then, um, you know, when I went to college, it's not really in my blog, but I went to Ohio university, which is known as being haunted. And uh, my friends now that I write the blog, they tell me I used to say that I saw my grandma. Like when I would wake up in the middle of the night and go out into the hall to go to the restroom, they said I would, I would always see my grandma standing there. And, um, you know, I don't remember that, but my friends all tell me, yeah, you, I mean, you always saw thing, you know, things that owe you. And um, then when I got to West Palm Beach, there's an interesting video on YouTube um, uh, Max Paranormal on YouTube. It's called Is Annie Okay? Um, check that video out. There's two stories from when I was in my 20s and when my friends started to realize two things happened and, my, and two different friends started to tell me that they thought, you know, I could see, see ghosts. But all this time, like, I just was like, it's my imagination. Maybe I was, you know, drank alcohol. You know, I chalked it up to a lot of different things. Yeah. But when my friends died, I started realizing that, like, I can get messages from spirits. And 
Um, my blog's really taking off to the point where my life is. It's getting closer to the point where my life is now. So it gets really interesting because I even moved out of the apartment that had all the activity. I moved across the country. And now, um, like, there are some stories on meetmyghost.com on the Rosewater episode. It tells you what happened when I moved, moved home um, up north. I started being led to places. Like, I'll, I'll go somewhere, and then somebody will tell me that they had a family member that died. But it's just the way I, the way I end up in the places or the way I meet the people, it's just unexplainable how it happens. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah I, I think so, the more we um, recognize the sensitivities, they, they start to develop, okay? Uh, in other words... When you become awakened to the fact that you're sensitive, then your heightens become more alert. And yeah, and and you know what's odd also is that when I moved back north, it it really took off. And this is where my family my family has um, two of my family members uh, do some psychic work and have these kinds of things happen to them, and they live in this area. Yeah. And uh, they feel that it, run, it ran in my family and all that family has lived in this area. I know my, my daughter is a very sensitive person, you know, and uh, um, she's, it seems like it, nearly every place that she and her husband moved to, they have some kind of activity, you know, and she's done um, uh, EBPs and, and stuff like that and actually felt spirit saying her name and, um, it, she has some pretty good stories, you know. So let me ask you this: Yeah, do you do you think spirits can attach themselves to people or places or you know furniture or something like that? Yeah, I I have a story in my blog that uh, I had a a ghost appear and um, I didn't know I, it looked like somebody I knew, but I didn't know why because I didn't know the person had died mm -hmm. and it was a person like I had been thinking of contacting but I hadn't talked to them for like 10 years and um, I realized later that I had an object that belonged to them that they gave me and they gave it to me for a very emotional reason like to tell me how much they cared about me and I had this object and I and when I realized it when I had realized I had the object I realized that every time I moved the object I get that feeling when I'd be in that area of the house, wherever the object was. I'd get a weird vibe. And um, I eventually found out, you know, the person had had passed away. And, and, and when I was sleepwalking one night, I saw, you know, I saw this apparition. And I, I was just wondering, like, how, like, who is it? Like, is it really this person? Like, how did it end up here? So I really do think it, it was because of the object. And it's a funny story. The people on Twitter tease me. I keep the object in my car oh, because that particular, yeah, that particular spirit, he, he knows, the spirit knows when I, he comes around, I get very nauseous and um, he doesn't, I don't think the spirit means that for that to happen, but it happens. So I keep the, I keep the haunted object in a, in a box in my car. And then I, then I don't have any negative activity, in for some reason in the car. I don't know why, um, but I mean I don't have anything happen in the car. Yeah. But it keeps the the negative vibe out of my house. So so do you think? So yeah, I think. Sometimes you know we. Yeah, so we, I think they can. We you know we <laughs> sorry. feel that uh, you know spirit has attached itself to a particular item. And we put it in another room, and every time we go into that room, you know, we get the vibes, you know. Do you think it's actually because yeah. of the spirit or because we know that the thing is in that room we just walked into? It? Well, I'm going to write a blog this week exactly about that. That's actually a funny you say that because that's exactly what my blog is about this week. Yeah. Because it, uh, the story is um, around... In my blog, it's called The Stone in the Jewelry Box. Um, there's like a series. It's a series. There's like four stories about that. And um, 
in my blog about the haunted object. And then I'm going to tell you a story about how I realized that there was something about the object um, later on because I had moved it around and finally my, my, my ex-husband and I were getting divorced and he called and I mentioned some stuff to him that I'm going to talk about in the blog. And he was like, wait, where, you know, where is this object? Yeah. And I started realizing, you know, it maybe had something a little bit more to it than I realized. Hmm. Um, we had uh, built a house about three years ago and we wanted to decorate it with kind of um, antique furniture. You know, something that looked wooden, you know, like it was well constructed. We didn't want to get these, you know, cheap, um, you know, like desks and stuff that has, you know, pressed particles together and stuff like that. So we went to, started going to an auction. And this auction house was uh, the guy, he would auction things from estate sales. And we bought a uh, armoire and I, I discovered that armoire is just a fancy word for a big cabinet where you could put junk that you have no other place to put and yeah but as soon as we got that thing we moved it into our room our bedroom and you know in no time at all it, it was like this thing was overwhelming it was it was oppressive in our red room so we moved it to our guest bedroom, and our daughter and husband came in from Chicago, and, and they stayed in the guest bedroom. And our daughter, you know, she's like, hey, where'd you get this armoire? You know, and, hey, you know, we told her, and she said, that thing is haunted. She said their bed was shaking during the night, and, um, you know, all this weird stuff. And so we we sold it. <laughs> And let me, let me tell you, <laughs> I was so glad to get rid of it that I was practically willing to give it away. But uh, since then, we stopped doing that. We don't go to the auctions anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought of, like, doing something with this haunted object that I have, but um, it's funny. I had to move. I was gonna I was going to mail it. I wasn't going to drive with it in the car across the country. But at the last minute, I didn't have time. So, you know, I put a few things um, in the jewelry box with it and um, just put it in my car. And for some reason, that, like, stopped any negative feeling or vibe from it and uh, just kind of um, quieted it down. So I'm yeah. just leaving it there. Because <laughs> I, I didn't want to part... I felt scared to part with it at the same time because the person really gave it to me uh, like a very loving gesture telling them, telling me yeah. what a good person I was. So right. I didn't want to part with that and then have a problem later because of that. Yeah. I understand completely, you know. Um, yep. Hey, I, I, I think uh, you did a really good job with your story. And, uh, and I really <laughs> appreciate you. You know, calling me and stuff. And, uh, yeah, anytime you want to do this, just the, um, you know, email, whatever, just so I'll, I'll know to, to be ready for your call. And, uh, okay. Well, go ahead. Well, if you, uh, anytime you need an extra story, just give me a call. Um, sometimes I can pull some out that I forgot about. Yeah. And uh, th that I forgot to write a story about, or maybe like I wrote wrote the story real quick for the blog, and there's a little bit more detail we can add um, that I le that I left out because I was in a hurry. So right, yeah. just let me know. Okay. Well, do you have anything else that you'd like to add? No, not right now. Um, like I said, um, I'm going to be starting a YouTube channel sometime soon. So I'm just hoping people will check that out. Well, very good. Let me know, and I'll be sure to check it out, okay? All right. All right. Well, thanks again, and I will talk to you soon, okay? All right. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. This is Curtis again, and I'm going to do a special shout-out to Annie 
and thank you so very very much for your call and your interview uh, it was great and I want to encourage everybody to follow her on her um, blog at ghosts that know me dot blogspot dot com and on twitter ghost underscore no underscore me and it's got an at thing in front of it okay so anyhow guys thanks again and i want to also ask all of you to um, be sure and visit the descriptions down below we have merchandise for sale and right now we're still doing a 15 percent off because i'm still traveling all over the good old usa and i haven't had time to look into it and change it so be sure you take a look at in the merchandise and find something that you might like okay thanks a lot and god bless you